How's it going everybody? This is Beat the Bush. This is the Fluke 117 digital multimeter. It's packed with features and I highly recommend it. Close to 15 years ago, I bought this Fluke 79 for myself and it's still working. I've used cheaper ones before. They can measure current, voltage, but on the back of your mind, you're always thinking, is it really all that accurate? When you're designing stuff, accuracy really matters because your decisions based on the multimeter is gonna affect thousands of products. So if you're gonna get a multimeter, get a fluke, the only thing to decide on is how many of the features you want included within one meter. It does not come with this case. Probes in here, multimeter in here, and it's a hard case. The standout between this one and the 115 is that this one has auto voltage and also a volt alert. It senses high voltages, so it's more for electricians but don't let the word electrician deter you if you're not an electrician because that is still useful each of these buttons if you press and hold it while turning it on you'll get into a special mode press and hold this one meaning it won't automatically power off for you press and hold the min max and then you get to turn off the beep even if i tap them together no beep but if i turn it off turn it back to the beeping now it beeps again. Press and hold the hold button, turn it on, and you can see the entire LCD light up. Press and hold the light button and then turn it on, and then it won't auto off your light. The light is off right now. Let me turn it on. Super handy if you're working in dark areas. If you want to probe around on a circuit board and not have your metal probe touch other things and short it out. You put this on when there is danger of shorting things out. Let's use the AC function and measure the voltage. 121 volts. This is true RMS, meaning it does a root mean square operation on the AC waveform. If you measure the peak to peak of this AC waveform, it's actually over 120 volts. So this is the RMS value. Then just change it to Hertz. We got 60 Hertz. Let's measure a battery, 1.479. This is probably the most often used function. Depending on the electronics, they can use them all the way down to like 1.0 volts. We can do DC millivolts overloaded. This is when you have very low AC or DC voltages. So let's measure that. 10.7 ohms. And at this point, we can measure the resistance of the leads too. So it's 0.2 ohms. So we know when we measure this resistor, we gotta subtract 0.2. So it's really 10.5. Let's do the continuity. If it's electrically connected, it will beep. But if it's a very low resistance, it also beeps. Let's do the diode. You gotta make sure it's the right direction. The marking is the negative sides. Four voltage here is 0.57. It's sending a bias current through there to generate this voltage. Let's check out the capacitance. This is a 10 microfarad capacitor. So it says 11 microfarad. I'm adding capacitance to it through my fingers. So let me not touch the leads. I'm getting 10.6. We've got AC current and AC frequency, that's going to be pretty rare to use. And then we got the AC current. You got to move the positive plug to the A on this side so that it runs through the current loop internally in the meter. If I measure the battery, it likely won't be over 10 amps. So I can probably just do it without any resistor. Let's see. There you go. Whoa, two, 1.7, 1.8 amps. So let's see. If I add in a 10 ohm, it's gonna reduce it a bit. Now it's only 0.1 amps. Auto voltage, you can measure DC, you can measure AC without switching this little knob here left and right. We gotta switch this back to the voltage. It only gives you one decimal place on here. And then without switching it, we can measure the AC as well. Cool, right? And then we can switch it to volt alert. This is a live AC plug, so let's see. If you're within like six inches, I'd say, the volt alert is over here, not the probe. See, the probes can get really close. It's not beeping until you bring the multimeter close to it. There is a fuse inside this multimeter. If you ever go over 10 amps, it will break. And these fuses are quite expensive, around five or $6 each. I have an idea that it's not over 10 amps. To check to see if the fuse is broken, change it to the resistance and you bring your red lead and touch it over here. And if the fuse is not broken, it'll show you a low resistance reading like 0.2. Alternatively, you can use the continuity checker and touch it here and it'll beep. Pull it out of this rubber thing. It gives it some protection when you drop it. it uses nine volt batteries. The battery is stored right here. 
because this meter has an auto off function, it will save your battery quite a bit more than previous models. Opening it up, here's that $6 fuse I was talking about. You can buy a magnetic hanging accessory to put in this slot. You can wrap the cables around and store your probes in these rubber slots, then it won't poke you. Sometimes when you're measuring something, you don't have three hands. You can't go around and measuring two things with one hand and the other hand holding the meter. So you can put one of the probes in this way and it's held securely. Then you poke around somewhere and then you can use the other hand to do another measurement. Personally, I like to store my cables the long way because you wrap it around less. It looks like it only needs to be about three inches longer so that you can fit it snugly right here and everything will be held in place. The Hertz here can actually detect frequencies over 60 Hertz. We've got 254 Hertz. Let's do 10 kilohertz. Wow, it does that. Can do 100 kilo, one megahertz? No. So this is a neat trick if you don't have an oscilloscope but you still want to measure the frequency. Just a really reliable tool to have. I highly recommend getting one. Check out my Amazon affiliate link down in the video description below. Thanks for watching. Until next time. <laughs>